You're renting the apartment next to mine? Renting? No, well, I bought the whole building. <laughs> what? How? With money, Frederick. Lots and lots of money. <laughs> Reboots of popular sitcoms like Frasier have us all wondering, are we back in the 90s? I watched Frasier in the 90s, so this is all very nostalgic for me. But you may have noticed at home that, indeed, a number of TV shows premiering this fall are reboots, some of our favorite shows from the good old days, and movies are also getting in on the action. Check this out. Of the 10 highest grossing films of all, of all time, oh, eight wow. of them are reboots or sequels. What? And joining us now to dive deeper into this is Variety TV critic uh, Aramide Tanubu. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. So what is going on? Is originality dead? Like, why is everything just being recycled? I think for Hollywood that reboots are a safer bet. So it's easier for them to say, we know this IP is tried and true, so let's just recycle it. We know it's worked previously. IP is an intellectual property? Yes. Like so these ideas. These ideas, yeah. these books, these films, these series. Maybe a series will go to a film, maybe a film will go to a series, but it's worked previously, so let's do it again. Is that another way of saying they're risk averse? I think so. I think especially during this time, post COVID, post the dual strikes that we experienced last year, it's really, really difficult for Hollywood to get its stride back. So they're gonna go to what they knew worked previously. And what I read is that this is not new. This is cyclical because this happens kind of in times of economic instability after the dot-com bust, 9-11, the, the Great Recession, is that right? For sure. I think people cling to nostalgia. So we go back to what is familiar to us, what makes us happy. We saw that a lot during the the pandemic, people were going back and watching Golden Girls and all of these Harry Potter uh, marathons and things that we love to watch and made us feel comfortable. So then what's going to get us out of this cultural rut with uh, a new and highly original sort of new era defining movie? I think for us, it's going to be really what just hit. So you see something like Baby Reindeer that came on Netflix. It really wasn't marketed, it wasn't promoted, but it hit number one because it was so interesting and so intriguing. It was fairly cheap for what Netflix normally does. So they're going to see something like that and think, how can we replicate that? How can we get new voices and new ideas? Repli yeah, copy it, yeah. How can we reboot the thing that worked that was original, yeah. So speaking of new voices and new ideas, are we then, you know, what does this mean for diversity, you know, in, term in terms of storytelling? Because I remember at the Oscars, Cord Jefferson, the screenwriter behind American Fiction, he spoke about this on stage, and I think we have a little clip of that. Let's listen. I understand that this is a risk-averse industry, I get it, um, but it, $200 million movies are also a risk, you know? And, and, and it doesn't always work out, but you take the risk anyway. And instead of making one $200 million movie, try making 20 $10 million movies. Wow. There are a lot of movies out there that are important, that are diverse, uh, that are thought-provoking, that aren't getting made because studios maybe aren't taking the risk on them. For sure. And I think it's really unfortunate. There's so many beautiful voices that we haven't heard. But what will happen because things in Hollywood are cyclical is we'll eventually hear them. Mm. If you look at something like the 1970s, you after the 60s, you have these huge movie stars. The 70s, Hollywood struggled, so they used black exploitation. Cheaply made black voices. It got things revving again mm. into the 80s and 90s. So we're just kind of in a downturn, mm. but it'll change again if you look at it historically. Is there any example of where a reboot is better than the original? Because, uh, I mean... I liked it just like that, but it wasn't Sex in the City. No, it's definitely not Sex in the City. I always go to the Parent Trap, which is like the Lindsay Lohan version yes. that I grew up with. It, to me, it's much more fun oh, than the original one. I think from the 60s and 70s, gonna... that that one was better for sure. Shrek 2 all the way. I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> There's something just funny about saying Shrek 2. Every time I say it, people are always like crack up. Uh, That's a reboot, not a. I mean, sorry, a sequel, not a, a reboot. A sequel, not a reboot. Yeah. Um, Shrek 5, I think, is coming out. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Shrek multi-billion-dollar franchise is what they're. <laughs> thinking about. So, uh, Arami Day, thank, uh, Tinubu, thank you very much. Appreciate thank it. Thank you both for TV having. critic for Variety.